Hi there, I'm, uh, I'm Jay, and we're in the garage here at the West Egg Lounge, and uh, this is my 1979 Lincoln Mark V, and uh, we're losing coolant, so we got to figure out why. So the first step to finding the coolant leaks on these things is to get a little bottle of that uh, UV dye. Sell them at all the auto parts stores and get them on Amazon for next to nothing, and, um, and a little UV flashlight, right? So that dye is going to come out of the coolant, you know, or wherever the coolant's leaking, that dye is going to be there with it. So it's going to, it's going to be immediately obvious where the leak is. So um, what I did the other day was I uh, just dumped some of that in there and I uh, drove it to just to go get groceries for a little bit, you know, about a half hour drive or so, you know, round trip. No big deal. Then I got all the way up to temperature. The thermostat opened all the way up. You get the idea. And uh, so come home, let it cool off. And uh, um, well, we're going to find out where, you know, where our leaks are. So. Okay, so got all the lights off in the garage, the door shut. So I'm going to use this UV flashlight to try to find where the radiator leak is. Generally speaking, there's a couple places. Um, right around the cap somewhere and, uh, and around the hose fittings. So let's check the hose fittings now. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that, right? So that's just leaking out, out of the, I believe, out of the hose. Uh, from underneath the hose. Okay, yeah, so that's no big deal. Uh, we can just, um, well, frankly, just probably just reseat the hose, and that side will be fine. But let's check the other side and uh, go over everything else to make sure there isn't any other major issues. Well, fuck. All right, so that right there is a problem. You see, that has nothing to do with the with the hose right here. So fixing that is, uh, unfortunately, a replace the radiator situation because those have little micro cracks. And it's actually started at the top, and it's dripping all the way down, or leaking even all the way down. Who knows? But um, it's hard to see on camera, but there's a little pan underneath the radiator, and that thing's filling up with coolant. So it's uh, actually somewhat substantial. Um, yeah, so we got to replace the radiator. So first step is uh, find a radiator. So All right, let's uh, open up eBay here and see what we got. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm looking for OEM Ford Motorcraft. So, oh shit. Um, so there's a lot of sites like, uh, you know, you can get it on Jags and Summit Racing and stuff that are uh, not OEM, but something that'll kind of work and not look like it's supposed to. And uh, the thing is, every single thing on that vehicle that I've done so far has all been genuine Ford Motorcraft, except for two things, the upper and lower radiator hoses, because they were not available at the time. But guess what? I have them now. So uh, we're going to do that too. But uh, uh, I'm looking for... Ah, uh, shit. Um, let's see, 73 to 79. No, I don't want that. Um, so it says for 1979 Lincoln Mark V. So let's find out. So Mark V, Coke door, 6.6 .6 liter. Okay. All right. So according to eBay's bullshit, it says it fits my vehicle. Um, Yes, we'll find out here. So 1979, 79, port, 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 port. Okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. All right, so uh, basically it doesn't say. So wait a minute, let's check this out. Oh, it's aluminum. No, I don't want that. Shit. See, now look at that right there. See, it's 1977 Lincoln Mark V. So that's the problem is because the bit, the, uh, although they use the same block, the 1977 Lincolns had a, uh, um, uh, a one and three quarter inch wide radiator. So unfortunately, the, and the one that I took out is a one and a half inch wide. So it's not going to fit, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And um, 
could I make it fit? Yes. Is it the way to do it? No. Uh, trying to keep that car as original as possible. And uh, so that's a no-go. So let's find a different one. So, you know, let's just go to Google and see what we can find. This does look like what it needs to be. Let's find out. So, yeah, copper and brass, that's what I want. Okay. For the 7.5 and the 6.6 .6 liters. All right, so. Uh, one and a half. So, worst comes to worst, I'll have to buy a $500 fucking radiator, um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to look for, um, I'm going to see if I can find a used OEM part, actually. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so I did end up finding something here. So, so it did come out of a 1979 with a 6.6 .6 liter. And uh, looking this thing over, there doesn't appear to be any signs of leakage. It's a little bit of damage. It is a used one. See, it came out of this car apparently. And uh, I think... I think we got it. So, yep. so I did already purchase this, but I uh, looked at it off camera. So, just showing you what I found. And uh, sometimes, in order to find OEM parts, you gotta go used because there is just no other option. I suppose worst comes to worst, I get this one, and uh, it's less than satisfactory for whatever reason. I can just spend the 500 bucks and get the, get the other one, but uh, it's worth the risk for this because this is only $150, and uh, and not to mention it's as original as original is going to get, and it is copper and brass, which is what I want. All right, so the second step here is uh, you see these uh, uh, fittings for the uh, transmission line cooler? Uh, yeah, we're going to need some uh, PB blaster on this guy because it's going to be a bit getting these things off because, uh, well, frankly, it's been over four decades since they since they've been on there. So, and uh, yeah, so this radiator has never been replaced ever. So, um, and I've basically rebuilt everything else on this stupid thing. So let's uh, finish the job, I guess. So, all right. So, uh, yeah, just uh, soak that up as much as you can. Don't worry about being messy because they're going to be messy anyway. Okay. So uh, we do have our pan underneath there. So as soon as I get that radiator hose off, I should be able to drain everything out. It's gonna be kind of a messy though, so looks like a five sixteenths fitting here. Yeah, huh? hey, look at that. Almost like I know what I'm doing. There. And let it let it pass. Uh, uh, come on. <clears throat> Alright, so we're taking that off. Huh. <clears throat> it's gonna be messy, so. I'm gonna try to control it the best I can. Now we're getting it all into the pan. I'm also draining the black with that of those holes too.
no, now we're just gonna let it drain for quite a while. So, so before uh, we start taking off the radiator itself, uh, what we got to do is uh, loosen up these fittings because that's gonna be even worse trying to loosen up these fittings with the loose radiator as well. So, um, while everything's still solid, let's see if we can crack these loose. I'm gonna go grab a uh, uh, wrench real quick. <clears throat> and just as predicted, this is going to be way more difficult than I thought. So, <clears throat> fuck. All right. All right, hang on. <laughs> so I'm going to tap on these to try to release any corrosion. There's a lot of times they get corroded. Right here at the edge, right, right there. So sometimes just vibrating it just enough to break that. Jeez. <clears throat> okay, so the whole fitting's coming loose now. There we go. Okay, so so what I ended up doing was uh, I broke it loose using the um, hammer and the uh, pry bar as a punch, and um, then I, I um, kept this part of the fitting still, and uh, then loosened this end. So we are home free, at least for the top one. Flare doesn't look damaged or anything, so I think we're good. So there's the fitting right there. So I'm going to try to do the same thing, although this might be a bit difficult uh, to see on camera because my arms are going to be in the way, but uh, uh, we'll give it a go, I guess. Um, so same size. It's five eighths and a half here. So and of course it has to be the most pain in the ass fucking Ugh. That actually came out way easier than I thought it would. Let's see if I can finger it. Not yet. Okay. Well, this is kind of difficult just due to clearance reasons. Or, uh, long wrench, short space, you get the idea. Um, but that actually came off significantly easier than anticipated. So, sorry you couldn't really see much, but I kind of needed the, the finger room. Yeah, so we are going to lose a little bit of transmission fluid. Kind of just is what it is. Deal with it, you know. And, uh, um, yeah. All right, so now we're just going to disconnect the top radiator hose. Let's see where I jerry-rigged this about 10 years ago with liquid gasket. But anyway, oh. Uh, ah. Yeah, a little bit of drippage, but uh, no big deal. Cool. Now, now on to disassembly. I think I fucked up here. Um, all right, so what I should have done first before I took this bracket off was uh, loosen up these bolts right here to get uh, to uh, remove the fan shroud. That's what I should have done, but. Uh, could have, would have, should have, I guess. So, all right, well, I'll go get the ratchet and then. Looks like a 3 8 oh, a little bit bigger, 7 16 The fuck? Fucking 10 millimeter, what do you know? All right, so, this is the first metric bolt that I have ever seen on this vehicle, so. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. And shroud should kind of just. I don't think it's attached to anything else down there. 
Nope. Okay. So. Uh, no, it kind of just, you can just move it over. You don't have to, yeah, it just kind of seats in the cradle down there. It's, it, it's just attached with the two bolts on the top. And uh, you can kind of just move it and kind of set it on top of the fan. And uh, yeah, take this bracket off. Yeah. Wow, that's way worse than I thought. Check that out. Yikes. So, uh, looks like it's probably been doing this for a while. And uh, we, I just didn't notice. But, um, because I always top off the fluids, you know, fairly regularly anyway. Uh, you know, at every oil change, I top off everything. So I didn't really think much of it. But, uh, yeah, so I guess uh, 45 years is long enough for a uh, for radiator, I suppose. All right, so, let's get her out. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, got to disconnect the uh, overflow tank. But, there. Oh, it's heavier and way heavier than I anticipated. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at all that. It's toast. Yeah, that's done. So, so we got to make sure that we seed it into that cradle down there. two little tabs underneath there that this fan shroud's got a seat in, then it can screw it in. All right, so now we got to reconnect the uh, transmission cooler lines. It's important to uh, make sure to not cross thread any of these things because you really only got one shot, so to get a good seal. That flare. Gotta make sure it's nice and square. Grab your line wrench. Choose the C. 
seats and seated on the flare. There you go. Yep, same situation down here. Just make sure you get that flare evenly seated. You don't cross thread anything. Now instead of just uh, reattaching the uh, upper and lower radiator hoses, uh, we're going to replace them because I actually have OEM parts now, so let's give that a shot. To make it a little easier to get it on, and also to make sure we don't have any leaks.
should be good. So. so here we're using a radiator funnel. Makes it easier to burp out all the air out of the system. Uh, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute, but we're gonna fill it up just straight up real quick. Radiator's bone dry, so it's gonna probably take quite a bit of coolant. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep filling this up until it's actually overflowing inside the funnel. And uh, then we're gonna start the car and then burp all the air out of the system. You'll see bubbles coming out. We'll get there in a minute, but I'm gonna fill her up. Second thought, we got a little bit of a crack in our. Uh... Shit. Okay, no, oh, that's no good. Let's see if I have another one that works here. Yeah, that sucks. Look at that. Huh. So we might not be able to use this. Well, unfortunately, we gotta do this the old-fashioned way. So. I have another uh Let's keep going. <laughs> Still got a ways yet. Okay, looks like we're pretty close to full here. All right, so we ran into a couple unexpected issues. Uh, the OEM uh, um, radiator hoses uh, didn't fit. Imagine that. So um, the hunt is still on for one of those. Uh, there's, uh, there's an inch and three quarter uh, um, fitting coming off the block, and that's what that's the barb I got to fit over instead of an inch and a half. It's inch and this particular uh, um, uh, hose has an inch and a half opening on each side rather than an inch and three quarter and an inch and a half so that's the problem we've got right now with that but and the other problem is that using that radiator funnel I actually cracked the uh, not really sure what you call this but uh, this guy right here so uh, that's rendered unusable so uh, really all we got what we got to do now is just uh, since I got the radiator filled up we got to start the car and uh, burp all the air out of it it's a lot easier with that radiator funnel but uh, we're just gonna have to do this the old way so um, just keep burping it out and just watching the uh, watching the coolant level you can see it by eye inside the radiator with the cap off um, go from there
Uh, looks like it's doing okay so far. Um, just once the once it warms up, then the thermostat opens up. Yeah, we start circulating, cooling through the block and everything, we know that it wasn't completely topped up. I'm going to let it run for quite a while, just to make sure. See that right there? That's the top level of the coolant. That's about where we want when we're completely done warming up. Uh, let's give it a little while. That's what we're looking for, those bubbles. That's air getting purged out of the system. Keep her going for a while. Bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. That's what we want. Uh, so let it run for about 20 minutes until there wasn't any more bubbles coming out of the radiator. And it did, st and the uh, coolant did start to expand a bit, which is also a good sign. And uh, so it was bubbling out of the radiator. My up oh, time to shut her off. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. Uh, Right there, put the cap back on. Yeah, it's steaming a little bit because we had hot cooling all over everything, but uh, uh, no actual leaks, just uh, just a mess that I made. So uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to uh, go for a test drive here pretty soon. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm probably going to drive around for a half hour or so and uh, keep some coolant in the trunk just in case, right? So <laughs> yeah, we'll go, we'll go from there. Now something I did notice was uh, I don't smell coolant anymore. Uh, I didn't notice it when I was driving that thing earlier with the uh, or driving this thing with the uh, bad radiator because it's always been that way you know, since I've had this thing and I never really noticed it honestly until it got until it got a little bit too bad. I happened to notice a puddle on the floor in my garage, but uh, um, yeah, I, so far so good. I don't have a water temp gauge in this thing, but it uh, doesn't seem to be getting hot. Uh, this thing you can tell right away, uh, it tends to vapor lock pretty much immediately if it does get above 210 or so. One thing I will have to do when we get back is uh, check the uh, transmission fluid level because uh, there likely was some still left in that radiator that I took off. I want to make sure that we're just topped up. I know there's no leaks currently, but... Uh, uh, we probably lost maybe a half a quarter or so. So uh, we'll have to find out. But it seems to be shifting okay though. You no, know, we didn't lose a ton. Uh, yeah, so not many problems. Um, yep, seems to be running okay. Uh, no leaks, no uh, no coolant smell. Um, it wasn't a bad repair. I ended up finding, well, as you know, I found a used uh, used radiator that happened to be uh, sufficient. So, uh, um, so that cost me with shipping and everything about two twenty five, dollars um, uh, Three gallons of coolant ended up costing... About forty dollars, including taxes and everything, um, and unfortunately, I could not use my uh, OEM radiator hoses because of uh, 
the discrepancy in size um, uh, for the hose barb. Um, so uh, the hunt will continue for one of those, but as it is, it's, uh, it's running just fine. Uh, no leaks, no problems, and uh, thanks for watching. Until next time.